All right, greetings everybody. This is going to be Symbolism in the Bible, part two of Horns. A uh, quick recap. Horns uh, can symbolize power. And uh, oof, there's a... Horns is used a lot in the Bible. I was surprised. I mean, sometimes when I start a Bible study, I have a general idea of where I'm going to go with it. But as I start researching the subject, you find a lot of things that lead to other things that lead to other things. And then sometimes I have to decide, you know, how how long am I going to make the series and what have you. So, I, you know, that's why I've come to believe, uh, believed in the past, uh, the Bible was not written by mere men, but was inspired by the uh, men of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, because all the doctrinal themes of the Bible are so interwoven with each other. It's like a cloth. All the threads connect with each other. It's just um, absolutely amazing, if you ask me. All right, so this is going to be horn and horns, plural. Now, when we're going to take a look at horns for a second here. So, in Exodus chapter 27 and Exodus 29 chapters, uh, Israel had left Egypt, and God has taken the nation into the wilderness to teach them his ways, and he, all, he took them out of Egypt, but more importantly, he wants to take Egypt out of them. As far as I know, the Bible never speaks kindly of Egypt. It was the land of Ham. Ham was one of the three sons of Noah, and Ham was the father of Canaan, who Noah cursed. And the Canaanites, the children of Canaan, were never spoken of kindly in the Bible. Never. Matter of fact, a lot of times, many times, God told Israel to go into the land and kill all the Canaanites. And why would you name somebody Cain then? Is, was he named after Cain? Was a, I, I'm not sure. You know, when somebody's genealogy is missing from the Bible, that's not a good thing. I mean, you can trace Christ and a lot of the kings of Judah all the way back to Adam. So when you've got a family line whose lineage is not numbered, that's uh, to me, that's indicative that it is a problem. But in Exodus 27, uh, Aaron and the Levites, the temple workers, well, not temple, but uh, tabernacle workers, were instructed to make an altar with horns. And then in Exodus chapter 29, uh, the altar had horns where they would make sacrifice. Uh, for example, in Exodus chapter 30 and verse 10, it says, and Aaron, now remember, Aaron was of the tribe of Levi. He was the brother of Moses. And Aaron shall make an atonement. Take a look at that word atonement. At one meant with the Lord. Think about it. At one meant atonement. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Lord. Well, this was in the Holy of Holies. The high priest would go in there once a year and not without blood. 
and I don't know how true it is, um, but from what I've read, according to uh, some extra biblical writings, it might be in the Bible, but if it is, I, I didn't catch it. But they would tie a rope to the ankle of the high priest in case he did something wrong and the Lord killed him so they could drag his dead body out of the Holy of Holies because nobody could go into the Holy of Holies but once a year, the high priest with blood. That's it. And very significant that uh, the veil of the temple, when Christ died, the veil of the temple ripped. That was the Holy of Holies. So Christ reconciled us unto the Lord. We didn't, he was, he took the place of, he was, he is the high priest that made atonement with blood. Read the book of Hebrews if you have any doubts of that. But the, um, in the Holy of Holies, the tabernacle, on the altar where the sin offering with blood was to be made, it had horns. I wish I could expand on that more, but I, I can't. So, now in the book of Leviticus, uh, if you take a look at the word, the first four letters, L-E-V-I, uh, Levi was one of the 12 tribes. He was the tribe that was set apart by the Lord to perform service in the tabernacle and later in the temple that Solomon commissioned. You know, it's Levi, Leviticus. And it records the instructions of the Lord to the tribe of Levi, how they were to build things like the furniture for the tabernacle, like, like the... Um, the altar and what have you, and how to perform the sacrifices. There were a couple of child, uh, two. I think there was two children of Levi who offered what was called strange fire. I don't exactly know what they did, but they did something outside of what the Lord commanded, and the Lord struck them down dead for disrespecting him. I don't know exactly what they did. I don't. But the Lord was not pleased. Offering strange fire means they did something contrary to what the Lord demanded. So keep that in mind. But the book of Leviticus covers the horns of the altar and all the sacrifices. So you want to you can read it uh i've read the book leviticus probably once or probably once and i probably listened to it on audio at least once but it really doesn't apply to christians that are in christ in the new testament so it, it's just a a foreshadow of what was to come but the book of Hebrews, if you're going to read the book of Leviticus, you should definitely read the book of Hebrews afterwards. Because the book of Hebrews fulfills and supersedes the book of Leviticus. Uh, I mentioned it in the last study, uh, part one. But in Joshua chapter 6, the priests were uh, going around the city of Jericho. So you had seven priests with seven trumpets of ram's horns and they went around the city every day for seven days. And then on the seventh day, which of course would have been the Sabbath, they went around the city seven times and they blew the trumpets and the walls fell flat. And, uh, of course, the, uh, the army on top of the walls, well, 
you know, they fell to their deaths, I guess. That's what I'm guessing. But uh, when you take a look at that, that is seems to be a foreshadow of in the book of Revelation. Because there is a trump or a trumpet and the new world order system will collapse. It's going to fall down. Babylon will fall down. Oh, yeah. And there's uh, seven trumps in the book of Revelation. I mean, I could we could probably make an entire study of just that. But um, the seventh trump is the last trump. And that's when the resurrection happens. The last trump at the end of the tri uh, tribulation in the book of Revelation that Paul mentions in Thessalonians. I know the pre-trib rapture crowd wants to make it the last trump happen at the beginning of the tribulation, but that's not how it works. The, the, the angels of the Lord blow the trumpets, seven different trumps, and at the last one is when the resurrection happens, which they like to call it the rapture, but it the Bible calls it the resurrection. But very, very, very similar Joshua and the blowing of the ram's horns, the trumpets. Uh, oh, oh, Chaplain Bob, the trumpets and the ram's horns, they're different. Well, let's take a look at Joshua 6 and verse 4. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets, seven trumpets of ram's horns. Okay. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. There you go. And in the book of Revelation, you got the, uh, the vials, the bowls, and the trumpets. And at the end of all that, the earth is pretty much destroyed. And then the earth, uh, then the Lord comes back to the earth with his, with his uh, cloud of witnesses and believers and an army of angels. And uh, there's going to be a whole lot of blood on the ground. The blood's going to go up to the horse's bridle. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of dead people. Billions, if you ask me. All right, let's take a look at uh, Psalm 75.10. I believe this is the Psalmist David. I'm not 100% sure, but David wrote a great deal of the Psalms. 75.10, all the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Hmm. The horns of the wicked are going to get cut off, but the horns of the righteous are going to be exalted. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 8 and contrast this with uh, Joshua and the trumpets and the walls of Jericho. Jericho, I guess you could sort of kind of can uh, apply to being like a type of Babylon, mystery Babylon. And they blew the trumpet seven times and the walls fell down. It all crashed. So let's go to Revelation chapter 8 and we'll take a look. Verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal... Now, remember, they marched around Jericho for seven days, and on the seventh day, they marched around the city seven times and blew the seven trumpets. Seven is a number that appears in the Bible many, many, many times. And there's a number of, well, a great, there's a few books that deal with numbers in Scripture, 
a guy named Bollinger. He has a thing called the Companion Bible. He covers numbers in Scripture. There's a guy, a Russian mathematician, who became a believer. Uh, his name was Ivan Panin, P-A-N-I-N. He did a book on numbers in Scripture. And uh, really, very, uh, like I say, it's just, the Bible's like a cloth, and all the threads are woven together. So, all right, Revelation 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven, wait for it, trumpets. Seven trumpets. Ah, just like Jericho that we just recently read, right? Verse 3, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given to him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar, and cast it to the earth. Now remember, um, people, that the earth is going to be destroyed with fire. The first time the Lord washed the earth with, the, with water, the flood of Noah, and uh, Israel was baptized in the Red, by the, going through the Red Sea, where the Egyptians were drowned under Moses. Remember the Red Sea parted? Oh, yeah. Uh, even Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, remember? Oh, yeah. Water baptism. Loosely, figuratively, uh, you're washing the flesh of dirt, I guess, and figuratively of sin, I suppose. But fire destroys all oh yeah fire kills bacteria fire will burn up everything oh yeah so and the earth the earth is going to be destroyed by fire i gotta think about it i think that's in yeah peter the book of peter first or second peter i forget i think it's second peter but uh yeah it's going to be burned with fire New heaven, new earth, right? Oh, yeah. Verse 5. And the angel took the censer, filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And I did an entire Bible study on earthquakes. Oh, yeah. And people, let me tell you something. All the major cities in the United States are built on fault lines. They're going to be destroyed. The earth is going to open her mouth and help the woman, which is the church and Adam's children, Israel, from the flood of the dragon. And the flood of the dragon is this uh, flood of heathens that is upon us. So when all these cities are wiped out with an earthquake, it's going to be a big help to us that survive. I don't know if I'll be at one of them, but possibly so. Yep, the flood of the dragon. Earth will open her mouth and swallow up the flood of the dragon. Read Revelation chapter 12. I did a video on it. Surprised, right? Yeah. Verse 6. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets. Hmm. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burned up. Guess what? This mimics the uh, plagues of Egypt with Moses. I did a Bible series on that. You could look at my playlists 
and uh, Revelation contrasted with Egypt and the book of Exodus. You know, the plagues of Revelation very closely mimic what happened in Egypt. Yeah, hail and fire with blood. Oh, yeah. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Remember, Moses struck the waters. I believe he struck the waters with the rod, and the waters turned to blood. Oh, yeah. And the Egyptians couldn't drink it. Oh, yeah. Verse 9. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Verse 10. And the third angel sounded. Sounded with what? A trumpet. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star was called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So, if you have approximately 12 hours of light during the summer equinox, it's only going to be light for two-thirds of a day. Oh, yeah, maybe eight hours instead of 12. Um, the summer equinox is the longest day of the year. The winter equinox is about six months later where it is dark for the longest part of the day. Or, yeah. Uh, it's the longest night of the year, whereas the summer equinox is the longest day of the year. So, uh, let's see. Verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet, trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. When the other three uh, trumpets sound, earth is just about destroyed because, well, they... Uh, they killed God's people. So God's paying them back. Okay, let's go to Revelation chapter 9. And the fifth angel sounded. He blew that trumpet. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Uh, I, that sounds like a volcano almost to me. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given great power. I'm sorry, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So, you want the seal of God in your, in your forehead, or do you want the mark of the beast? Oh, yeah. You know, it'll either be in your right hand, or in your forehead. But I've known people born without an arm. And uh, if you don't have a right arm, well, they can't put it in your right hand. So they'll put it in your forehead. 
So, these scorpions are going to hurt people that don't have the seal of God. Verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them. So these locusts, scorpion locust things are, they're not going to kill them. But that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. Can you imagine that? These people are being tormented so bad they want to die. You know, just before I came to, to back to the Lord, I was so sick that I actually almost committed suicide. I took a 357 Magnum, put it up to my head, cocked the trigger, and... Uh, yeah, it was bad. I, I felt horrible. I felt so bad I didn't want to live. That's how bad it was. But uh, the Lord flashed something in my mind that changed changed my mind, but I didn't know it at the time, but uh, changed my mind to wait. And then shortly thereafter, the, the Lord healed me from an incurable disease. So, yeah. And people wonder why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, hey, I could be watching television and drinking beer and chasing girls and doing all the stuff and doing drugs and do all the stuff I used to do when I was younger. But uh, I got a more important things to do now. So, yeah. Verse 6, And in those days shall men seek death shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns of gold, and their faces were like the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of a woman, of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sounds of their wings was as the sound of chariot of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Sounds like genetically modified organisms, don't it? And they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek hath his name Apollyon. And from what I understand, that means destroyer. I could be wrong, but... Verse 12. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Oh boy, more fun for the uh, ungodly and the wicked, right? 13. And the sixth angel sounded. Here it is, you got six trumps, not Donald. And I heard a voice from the four horns, the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. See, this sounds very, very, very similar uh, in heaven. The golden altar with the horns, the four horns, sounds like uh, the true representation of the horns on the altar in the tabernacle in the days of Moses and Aaron and Levi on earth. See, I'm sure the... Uh, that was a the, the representation on earth mimicked what was already in heaven. So you got the four horns, the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Wow. 
Uh, let's see. If there's about 7 billion people, do you know that's over 2 billion people dead? 2 billion. That's a lot of corpses, a lot of graves. And the army, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. I looked this up and that's 200 million. That's one heck of an army. That would probably be, that is going to be the largest army that ever was on the face of the earth. 200 million. That's a lot. Do you know there's one country on earth right now that could field an army that large with, without even mustering a sweat? China. China has 1.5 uh, billion people. And if you don't know what a billion is, that's a thousand millions. A thousand millions. So 200 million out of a thousand, 500 million is nothing. You know, they could easily field an army that size. Verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And by the way, I'm not saying the army of this horseman with 200 million is China. I'm not saying that. Um, I'm just pointing that out. But I'm not sure, actually, so... Verse 18, by these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Sounds like flamethrowers to me. I don't know. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which, can, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. See, these people are not going to repent, and they're worshiping the devils. Neither repented they of their murders. Who do they murder? God's people. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. All right, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verse 15. You know, this is one of the reasons why these so-called Hebrew Roots people hate Paul. Uh, let's go to verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, you know, dead, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Do you believe Jesus died and rose again? I, I absolutely do. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. The dead, right? Those that died in Christ. I mean, there is going to be a remnant of people who are alive when Christ returns. I don't know if I'll be one of them, but, or maybe you will, I don't know. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a secret rapture. No, I don't think so. No. That's only if you're in the Baptist church. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yeah, people always shout with secret raptures, right? With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. 
with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. You know, people, if you're not caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. It's the wrong Christ. It's not Jesus Christ. It's the Antichrist. The beast, the false prophet, will herald the arrival of the beast, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. It's the wrong one. That's probably one of the most important things that people could ever know in the end times. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Oh, yeah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Another one of Paul's writings, which they hate. They hate Paul's writings. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. In this sinful flesh, people, we cannot enter God's kingdom. That's why we get a resurrected body. That's why Christ gives his people a robe, a white robe of righteousness washed in his own blood. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to read the Bible. The Bible starts in Genesis. I mean, come on, you can go to Amazon and get the Alexander Scorby King James Bible on audio CDs uh, for about $70, $80. Delivered. The whole Bible on audio CDs, whatever it is, you know. 80 bucks. Beats the heck out of going out to the restaurant with the family. You know? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. There's seven trumps, people. The seventh one is the last one, and is at the end of the tribulation when the earth is just about destroyed. Unless, of course, you're a Baptist and you believe in the preacher of rapture, then the last trump is before the first one even blows. You know, that's like saying A is the last letter of the alphabet because it happens before the, the tribulation. You know, I, I, have, I have zero... Uh, tolerance for these people. Zero. Eventually, virtually every Baptist preacher is going to be proven to be a false prophet. Because if they're teaching the preacher of rapture as a fact, and it fails to happen, they are a false prophet. And do you know the Bible says to kill false prophets? Kill them. Stone them to death. Yeah. I'd love to see that happen, but uh, yeah. You know, that's the difference between me and them. I don't purposely teach people lies. I mean, I, I might be wrong on some things, but, you know, whether they're lying on purpose or whether they're lying in error because they don't know any better because it's just what they were taught in school, either way, the Lord didn't reveal the truth to them. Kent Hoven, he... Uh, he went to prison for, what, nine, nine and a half years. Um, he exposes evolution as the fools for... Uh, he, makes, he makes fools out of people that believe in evolution. And then he started talking about the one world government and all this stuff. And, boy, I started listening to that. And I was like, boy, they're going to get him for this. And sure enough, he went to prison nine and a half years. 
Uh, they say, they'll tell you he went to prison for tax evasion, but that's a lie. He didn't. He went to prison for what's called structuring. Uh, thing is, is, if you withdraw or uh, deposit $10,000 or more into a bank account, the bank is required by federal law to report it to the government. Well, Kent was withdrawing his own money in thresholds under $10,000. So they called that crime, you know, spending your own money, structuring. They said he was structuring the deposits and the withdrawals in increments under $10,000 to avoid the $10,000 limit to be reported to the government. I didn't know that uh, spending your own money was a crime, but evidently it is. So they put him in prison for nine and a half years for spending his own money. Yeah. But uh, I know why he really went to prison. But the point is, when he was in prison, he had a lot of time to study the Bible. He went into the uh, prison believing in the pre-trib rapture, and when he got out, he says, I couldn't find it anywhere. I, I looked for it, and I couldn't find it. The pre-trib rapture is not in the Bible. I was like, praise the Lord. Ken Hovind found out the truth. Well, guess what? All those Baptist churches that used to, oh, hey, Brother Hovind, we, we, we love you, Brother Hovind. Come preach at our church. Fill it up. You know, and we'll pass that collection plate around. But boy, when he, when he came out against the pre-trib rapture, oh, you're a heretic, Kent. Oh, uh, we don't, you're not, you, you can't come to our church anymore. I didn't know that it was believe in Jesus Christ and the pre-trib rapture and thou shalt be saved. I had people, uh, Baptist preachers, tell me I'm not even saved because I don't believe in the pre-trib rapture lie. You tell me these people aren't deceived. I hope the Lord gives them their due reward in time. So, All right, so. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of, of an eye, at the last trump, not, not before the first trump, at the last trump, the, at the end of the revel, uh, tribulation, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. See, the dead in Christ are going to get raised first. And if Christians are being murdered for their faith during the tribulation, how can they be raised if the, if, if the dead in Christ has already been raised? They can't. When the last person who dies for the faith has been martyred, that's when the resurrection happens, not before. Yeah, I, I, I despise Baptist churches for that reason. They're false prophets. P-R-O-F-I-T dollar sign. Prophets. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. There you go. People, it just, it never ceases to amaze me, or it really doesn't. So, read Christ in the parable of the wheat and the tares. The weeds, the tares are weeds. Christ tells you the weeds get gathered first. Not the righteous, not the, not the wheat. You know, things they never tell you at the, the Baptist church. I'm serious. I've been, you know, seriously. They, they'll tell you, oh, you're not even saved. If you don't believe in the pre-trib or rapture, uh, you're uh, not even a saved. Uh, and you got to leave. Because we don't want you exposing us as liars. 
So get out of our church. That's right, it's their church. Because it's not Christ's church. At least that's my opinion, so. I know, I'm pretty harsh, aren't I? Yeah. Well, you know what, people? I've been a believer for about half my life now. 30-something years. And uh, I've been to a number of churches. And I've been kicked out of a lot of them because I ask too many questions. I'm not confrontational. You know, I'm like, well, wait a minute. S excuse me, pastor, you teach this, but what about this verse here in the Bible? And you do that two, three times, and they tell you to leave. So you can't tell me they don't know what's either. Either the Lord blinds their eyes or they work for the devil. Take your pick. Either way, they're doing the work for the devil. So, uh, some of you, I suspect, will be around. And if things collapse, the economies are going to collapse. They, they absolutely will. I mean, you know, when you got paper money, uh, governments just print money until it's worthless. And then the economy will collapse. A planned depression. People will not be able to buy food. There won't be any jobs. Um, there'll be riots. The cities will absolutely be impossible to live in because of all the satanic heathens. And there will just be bloodshed and murder everywhere. It will not be safe. People will... Our people will have to flee to the wilderness. Revelation chapter 12. And I did a study on that. And uh, the cities are not going to be safe. And Christians are going to be killed off. You know, unless of course you're a Baptist and you're going to fly away before all this happens. But, uh, you know, they might, be, they might be a tad bit disappointed. But the uh, thing is, um, somebody's going to have to meet these people in the wilderness and they're going to have questions. Why is all this stuff happening to us? Why? Well, because you have forsaken the Lord. Do you know that in 1960 abortion was illegal in this country? Yeah. A lot of states, interracial marriage was illegal. Yeah. You know, and then people will tell you, oh, well, that's racist. And they're pro-choice. You're pro-murder of children? Really? But they don't call it a children. They call it a fetus. Yeah. Well, you take a premature fetus and bring it out, and a lot of times they can have it grow to be an adult. That's what a preemie is. But, uh, yeah, the Church of Satan was founded in 1966. And around that time, they had the pill. They, you know, they don't even call it birth control. It They called it the pill. The Lord says, be fruitful and multiply. Children are a blessing. The world says, oh, children are a burden. Don't have them. Abort them. Kill them before they're even born with the pill. And now the, the righteous are persecuted. And the wicked are released from jail to keep committing crime. I've never seen such a violent country like we are now. You know, Chicago, last couple of years, has had more murders alone. Just Chicago. The third largest city in the United States. Chicago. Chicago alone had more murders than the entire country did in 1960. Of course, people will argue and say, well, you know, yeah, well, we had a, we had a lot more population now than we did back then. 
Well, that's true, but um, Chicago by itself did not have anywhere near close to the population of the United States. Nowhere near it in 1960. You know, I think it was like a uh, about half, 45% to half of the population that we have now back in 1960. But crime was virtually very, crime was fairly, violent crime was fairly rare in 1960. It's not, it's not rare now, that's for sure. But one day cities will be uh, an extremely dangerous place and our people to survive will have to leave. And I did a study series on that too, playlists. The Wilderness Experience. Not a bad idea to know uh, things you would need to survive if you didn't have modern society. So I got stuff on that too, if you're interested. So, and by the way, anybody can write me at Palm Beach Weddings with an S, plural, Palm Beach Weddings at gmail.com. And in case uh, Tube ever deletes my account, you can write me at chaplainbob at proton, P R O T O N, protonmail.com. Or you can write me at Bob Walker, K as in Kilo, J as in James, V as in Victor, Bob Walker, actually it's King James Version, at hotmail.com. And, uh, you know. Ask me uh, about getting an SD card or what have you. So, yeah. And I'll get you all the uh, sermons and audios and Bible studies that I've done. And uh, got a lot of material on health issues. I don't dare say the V word. Because I'll probably sense, sense, sir, it. Yeah. You know how that goes. So, but one day, our people will have to live outside the cities and they're going to be asking questions. Why are we here? Uh, we were supposed to be raptured out of here before all this mess happened. Well, sorry, Charlie, but only the best tuna gets to be star, star kissed. That was a commercial from the 70s, I think. So, maybe the 80s I don't remember but so it'll be up to some of you probably to um, let people know why are why are they targeting our people why well it's the time of Jacob's trouble Jacob Israel where's that in the Bible well in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7 Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jacob's trouble. Read Matthew 24. There's going to be a time of trouble. And that's what tribulation means. Trouble. Capital T. Bad news, people. It's coming. God is angry with his people. Angry. I know he was angry with me. He almost killed me to get my attention. But it worked. He got my attention. He got my attention. And I'm glad he did. And I'm glad he's slow to anger and quick to forgive and full of great mercies because I'd have been dead a long time ago I guess that's why we're supposed to forgive those that wrong us because if the Lord can forgive us we should forgive others right so all right well um part three of horns is going to be probably Daniel chapter 7. I'm going to try to do 
of justice to explaining Daniel chapter 7 because it talks about the horns and the last kingdom and a lot of people will say oh the last kingdom is the Roman Empire reunited or revived or what no no the Bible says the last the the fourth kingdom of the beast is going to be diverse from all the others it's going to be different you know and they want everybody looking at Rome Rome's not going to be it. Rome's going to be just a part of the beast system. It's not going to be the head. It's not going to be the root. It's just another part of it. So, all right. So, uh, with that in mind, let's close this out. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>